Hey everybody, and thank you for coming. Uh, we're talking today about the role of NFTs in uh, New York's art scene. And to commemorate this historic moment in NFTs, I put together a curated exhibit called Five Vibes of NYC. And the reason I did it was because I've been hanging out around in the New York City art scene for about 15 years now, and never before has there been so much energy and so much fun and uh, so much n new collectors and liquidity just coming into the market and exploding. And it really has changed New York art, the art scene forever. Okay, so who am I? Uh, I have lived in New York since 2008. I'm a television editor, but as uh, a lot of filmmakers know, one of the cheapest places you can go to film your locations and whatnot is art galleries. And so my friends that were, I was making science fiction films with in my 20s, they lived in a uh, art gallery called Greenpoint Gallery, and that's under the Pulaski Bridge in Greenpoint. And we hung out there all the time. And so most of my friends were artists, uh, independent artists. And I never collected any of their art. Uh, unfortunately, because it was so physical, it would fill up my apartment, and we'd always be moving apartments, and I would never, uh, and I always felt bad not collecting their art. And this is a most, this is a recent uh, shot of me at a uh, Bushwick Art Gallery called F. Studio that I've been hanging out at uh, recently. And I think the, the main reason that it's exploded is because of the technology, and so. Ethereum has laid the groundwork and payment rails that have just exploded the market in the same way laying train tracks across America in the turn of the, revo uh, the, turn of the 19 1900s uh, exploded the infrastructure of America. And also Twitter and the social media has also been the huge communications network that we're all part of and know how, how it goes. And I really do believe we're in a moment an art revolution just as big as the renaissance of the 14 and 1500s for a couple different re reasons. First of all, this art revolution is worldwide. It's across the whole globe instead of one continent. Uh, there's multiple styles and genres that have exploded into, into the ether, like glitch art, AI art, and there's even the revival of old styles like neo-precisionism, which is based on the popular precisionism of the early 1900s. And also, too, this market bubbled up from the bottom up. There wasn't, in the traditional art market, there's a lot of gatekeepers, uh, museums, really rich collectors, uh, and auction houses would decide which artists became big and popular. But as we can see with crypto punks, Pepe and Squiggles, those were completely democratized from the ground up, peer to peer, that exploded. And even though this has been a global phenomenon, I think New York City is the main center of gravity for it all. And first of all, it's because of this conference. This is uh, the biggest NFT conference. It's been so great this week. I went to the last few NFT NYCs, and this by far is the one with the most energy and excitement around it, the most stuff going on. And even though, uh, even though it's a bear market, it hasn't felt like that. No one's feeling down about themselves or anything like that. And New York City is also the epicenter of traditional art. And up in the top right corner here, that is a shot from the Armory Show. And the Armory Show happened in 1913. And that was the first time that abstract art was exhibited in America. And so that was, for instance, Vasily Kandinsky's very first showing in America. And really, that changed the trajectory of art. Uh, and it happened in New York City. And just like the Armory Show changed the trajectory of art in 1913, over 100 years later, I feel like NFT NYC is having the same exact effect on art, not just in America, but the whole world. And so, in late December 2022, I was just scrolling through my timeline, and this piece called Life in NYC by Grant Yoon popped up in my feed, and I immediately recognized it as a scene of New York 
that I'd walked by a thousand times before and been indifferent to, walked by without even uh, taking a second look. It's just the earnest vibe of men at work. And it really immediately reminded me of the, lunch, the famous picture, Lunch Atop a Skyscraper, from the early 1900s. And I really felt like this signified uh, the, like a new revolution in the same way that was a really iconic photo of the Industrial Revolution. And so I ended up purchasing this piece from Grant, and in that moment, I realized, oh my goodness, this, this is gonna be amazing. Like this, is, this could be the foundational piece for a, an art exhibition that captures different vibes of the city. And so after purchasing this piece, I started reaching out to other big artists in NFTs right now and talking with them to figure out what different vibes of New York City we could capture to commemorate this moment in art history and the city and, and how the NFTs had an, a, a role in New York City, and New York City affected NFTs as well. So the next piece, the next artist I contacted was Terrell Jones, and it's black, the piece is actually color, but it's black and white here, because by the time we put the slides in, it wasn't ready. But we ha it's, it's now ready, and it'll be exhibited tonight. And here, we see one of the themes of his work is the DeVille crime family. And we see my PFP, Eternal Pepe, is in trouble with the crime family. And this is, I felt, captures an ironic vibe of New York City. And that vibe is the story of Icarus, where a lot of really ambitious people come to New York to make it big. They, they make it, they get everything they wanted ever in the world, and they still keep going to the point where they fly too close to the sun. And the film that uh, also captures that vibe, of course, is Wolf of Wall Street. And I talked, when, and as uh, me and Terrell were talking about this piece and coming up with the idea for it, we also bonded over our shared love of Pulp Fiction and this famous Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson say what motherfucker scene. And uh, he, and so that's, that takes place in LA, but I thought this was a good, New York City rendition of that, of that scene. And also the vibe you can feel too is like, when you get in trouble and you know you're in trouble but the law or whoever you're in trouble with hasn't caught up to you yet and it's a really anxious, uh, anxious vibe to have. And that's the, that's, one of the, that's the ironic vibe of New York. The third piece is done by Jeremy Booth. It's called Bodega Western and while I was talking with Jeremy about this piece, he, he's doing a, a cowboy theme right now. And so he wanted to do a cowboy riding a horse through Brooklyn. And if you can tell, all the bystanders, all the bystanders are completely unaware or, or completely indifferent to the horse walking through. And the vibe of that is also captured in a 2015 People article that says, Brandy gives free performance at NYC subway, passengers respond like New Yorkers. And so the idea there is that the novel in New York City is still not so novel, there's nothing shocking, and you can see the craziest thing in New York City, and uh, all the people around will just keep walking without, without even picking up their phone off, the, or picking up their head off their phone. Uh, the fourth piece uh, is The Lonely Vibe. This is by Sigma X. And this is a day in Brooklyn. This is a separate piece that was different from uh, the piece that he's showing tonight, um, but that one also wasn't ready. Getting, uh, commissioning artists is kind of like herding cats, if you can't tell. And this vibe is the lonely vibe. It's a huge city, millions of people. It's still easy to feel lonely. And me and Sigma connected over Edward Hopper's work, who also really captured that vibe in his famous pieces, Nighthawks, and my favorite Edward Hopper piece, New York Office. Finally, uh, a big part of the vibe of any city is the food. And in New York, everyone knows that the thin crust, really cheesy slice of pizza 
is the main cultural staple food. And so, so complex did this wonderful piece of a piece of pizza. My favorite is pepperoni. So he did a pepperoni slice for me. And he really said that that piece was inspired by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, who were also New York based. And those are the five vibes of New York City. And they're all going to be exhibited tonight at a party we're having called the Canal Street Show uh, on 90, 393 Broadway. And everyone's invited if they'd like to come. Thank you. And thank you, thank you for thank you for coming. <laughs>